Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to do the required practical for C5 chemical changes. And in that practical, you need to know how to make a salt from an insoluble base and an acid. So the general equation you need to remember is that an acid and a base makes a salt and water. Now a base you can recognise because it's usually a metal oxide. So the base that we're using today is copper oxide powder. So we're using copper oxide and hydrochloric acid to make copper, chloride and water. So the first thing we need to do is measure out the acid. So we're going to measure out 25 centimetres cubed of hydrochloric acid. And I'm doing that with a measuring cylinder. So if you get asked to describe a method in the exam, make sure that you are saying exactly what measurements you're using and you're also describing what equipment you're going to use to measure it. So we've measured 25 centimetres cubed of the acid using a measuring cylinder. I'm going to place that into a small beaker so that I can warm up the acid. It's important we warm up the acid because that way it will help the reaction go quicker, it will increase the rate of reaction and we don't want it bubbling away furiously because if that's happening we're losing some of the acid into the air so we won't make as much product. So it's important we say that we're going to warm the acid gently. So we're going to come back to the acid in a minute and see what we'll do with it once it's become warm. The acid's been warming up for a few minutes now, so I'm going to take it off the heat so it doesn't start to boil. We only want it warm to increase the rate of reaction. And then we're going to start adding to it the copper oxide. So if I add a small amount of copper oxide to it, to the acid, and stir the acid with the copper oxide. Before long, we will start to see some copper chloride forming. We'll see the colour change into a blue colour. Now, how much copper oxide do we add? How much base do we add? The answer is, we add excess. And that word means we're adding more than we need. Because at the moment, we can see that we're getting some copper chloride, it's turning blue. But there might still be some unreactive hydrochloric acid. So we're going to keep adding more copper oxide until we're sure that there's no more acid to react with that. And we'll know because the copper oxide will settle to the bottom and we'll see the black powder forming. So we're going to add one more spatula of copper oxide. So because it's been warmed, it shouldn't take long for all the acid to react to the copper oxide to make our salt and water. So in there now we'll have our copper chloride salt, but we've also now got too much copper oxide because we added too much deliberately to ensure all the acid is reacted. So now we need to filter out that excess copper oxide. So we do that with a filter funnel and filter paper. So once again, in an exam, you mention as you go along the equipment you're going to use for this experiment. And we pour the solution through the filter paper. And we should start to see we're getting some copper chloride filtering through. So I'm going to leave that filtering for a few moments and then we'll come back to it and see how we get a pure dry salt from that copper chloride solution. We can see here, now it's finished filtering, we've got a nice sample of blue copper chloride solution. But we want a pure dry salt, so we want to get rid of the water because we've made a salt and water. So we need to evaporate the water. Now rather than just placing the evaporating dish straight onto the gauze, we're going to use a water bath for more controlled heating. And that means that uh, we're not going to get uh, crystals of the salt spitting out, and also we're not going to lose too much of the product by heating it too quickly. So we've got a beaker of water as a water bath, we've got an evaporating dish sat on top, 
and we've poured our solution into there and then we're going to heat that up but we're not going to heat it up until all of the water is gone. We're going to heat it until the crystals start to appear around the edge or until half of the liquid remains and half of the liquid has evaporated. So we need to leave that some time now. When we get to that point, we would set the evaporating dish to one side and let the rest evaporate naturally. And then just to ensure there's no moisture in the crystals that we get, we would then put it in an oven to dry, or you could say put it in a desiccator to get pure dry crystals. In this required practical, as well as being asked about an acid and a base, you can also be asked to describe how to make a salt from an acid and a carbonate. So this time, this is the general equation we need to remember. Acid plus carbonate makes a salt and water and carbon dioxide. The method is still exactly the same. You would talk about measuring out with a measuring cylinder a known volume of acid. You would then add excess carbonate to the acid just like we added excess of the base in the previous example. You would see some fizzing occurring because it's making carbon dioxide and when you've added too much of the carbonate so it starts to sink to the bottom of the beaker, you then know you've added excess. After adding excess carbonate, you then need to filter out the excess carbonate and then that would leave you with the salt and the water, the salt solution in other words. So then you would use a water bath and evaporating dish to evaporate half of the water, then let the rest evaporate naturally, and finally, once again, place the crystals in an oven or a desiccator to obtain a dry product. So that is how you do the required practical for C5 chemical changes. Also, check out the video about exam questions that you could be asked about this required practical. Thank you for watching.